Howdy y'all, what's up? Primal here, and welcome back to yet another reaction video. In the last one I said there was one more thing I'd probably react to today, and this one was something I made a prediction about, well, given rumors I've heard over time for quite a while now, and I normally don't cover this kind of stuff on my channel because there aren't really too many people around me who like it, and the fact that there hasn't really been anything from these people that has interested me, but I think that's just changed today. So I'm guessing there's a lot of you who have been Pokemon fans. I, I remember when I first got into it, and this day of all days would be a great time to reminisce on that because it's just as everyone thought, there are Diamond and Pearl remakes coming, and we're going to find out when and a whole lot more about them because it's a great day for us all in terms of that because Gen 4 was the generation a lot of people started with and of course I was one of those people. I got, I remember getting Pearl version, learning everything about the Pokemon universe and I remember my starter, my little Chimchar who I fully evolved into an Infernape and had a close bond with. I remember catching Palkia and learning that such legendary Pokemon were real in that universe. Ah, oh, good times. I remember Cynthia whomping my butt after exhausting all my resources just to get through the Elite Four. I remember... I remember everything about my very first journey, and... I believe this year it's gonna all get revived. I just, I'm actually a little bit excited because, let's be frank, Gens 7 and 8 didn't really hit the bar as the first six generations did. I mean, of course, there was Gen 1, which everyone has grown attached to, but it was just basic. Gen 2 was more of an expansion for that, but I still enjoyed it regardless. And then there was Gen 3, Gen 4, which is what I started with. Apparently, I kind of went backwards in terms of Pokemon. I went from all the way from Sinnoh to Hoenn, playing the classic Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. I basically played Emerald because it was like the complete experience for the Hoenn region. And then I played Heart Gold and Soul Silver. And then, of course, I got to go through Johto and then the Kanto through that. I mean, I haven't really, you know, played any actual real first gen, like, you know, with red, blue, fire red, blue, green. I never really got through all of them, but I still got through the regions regardless. And then I remember when Gen 5 was coming out, I was a little bit skeptical about it at first because I felt like it was just best to, you know, stay with the four regions they already had. <clears throat> it's like the more they expanded on with these new regions, I just, I wasn't entirely sure. So yeah, I was a bit, I had my skepticism about Kalos and Unova, but I enjoyed them regardless. Yeah, then I just got on the hype train for Gen 5, just watching people play it, and the legendaries were just amazing. I, Zekrom was my favorite out of the pair. That was actually a really fun time. I remember having giant posters of both Reshiram and Zekrom in my room back in my home before I moved. But then I gave them to my childhood friend, who was a huge Pokemon fan herself. And yeah, then I got X and Y. Believe it or not, I actually enjoyed that one. I mean, yeah, it didn't have much, and of course, it was like a, only a set amount of Pokemon and not very many legendaries or post game content. Which is what kind of helped people, you know, stay attached to those games. But, like I said, regardless, I enjoyed them, especially Kalos, and I enjoyed the Pokemon that came out of them. Gen 7 and 8, I wasn't entirely sure about, but apparently Ultra Sun and Moon turned out being really good, especially with the Ultra Beasts and the whole story behind Necrozma and the Celestial Legendaries. Yeah, but Gen 8, it just did not stick with me. Sword and Shield, I mean, there wasn't... It just 
felt rather bland. I mean, I never played it. The only thing I'd say that were that was good that came out of it were like, I guess the DLC and the gym leader theme. But like I said, I never played them. So yeah, and the starters were crap, and the legendaries were not all that good. So yes. Okay, guys. Never mind. I thought my stepdad was coming back, and I just didn't want to disturb him. So. Yeah, back to, where was I? Never mind, well, I think we can get into the rest of it later on. I mean, I've been rambling for quite a while now, and I haven't, I have yet to still watch the video. I just, all right. So, yeah, with all that out of the way, let's get right into the trailer. Let's see what Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl have to offer us. 19 Sword of Shield, 2016 Sun and Moon, 2013 Next and Mark, 2011 Black and White, and now back to 2007 when Diamond and Pearl re released in America. Such sweet memories. I think that's the kind of DS I used to have. It was a quick one. Yeah. Such fond memories. Experience the brilliance once more. Huh. That's pretty interesting style. I guess they're trying to recapture the original style a little bit with that. I think it's used for that. I think it's like the color to be a little bit bigger. Ah, oh, the nostalgia. Remember the underground? I remember almost every single bit of the Sinai region. I remember how hard it was to get that fight in my eye. Just given their special evolution speed. Brilliant diamond. And stunning pearl. Evolution worldwide in late 2021. I can't believe that'd be the case. Pokemon always comes out like the fall or the winter, like the very end of the year for the most part. Well, actually it wasn't that way before, because... But another story awaits. The Pokemon series enters a new era. Hmm. Yeah, there was also like one more thing from today that I wanted to look at. Yeah, there was like something called Pokemon Legends Arceus. It's open world Pokemon. Huh. Okay, this should be interesting. Let's let's take a look. Hopefully, this isn't someone else's video. Someone else's reaction to this. This is a tale from a long, long time ago. Hmm. when the Sinnoh region was still only a vast wilderness. Oh. A certain village bustled with the comings and goings of people. While in the mountains and seas, Pokemon roamed as they pleased. So is this like a more sword and shield, a more sword and shield version of, or Breath of the Wild version of Diamond and Pearl? Okay. Interesting. A Lucario taking down a Star Raptor. I find that very hard to believe, especially since mine pretty much obliviated my Lean's team. Like, those were Jojo Pokemon. And. And you know the. Those were Jojo. Alola and Unova starters. 
What the heck? Dark, yes. Oh. Oh. Releasing worldwide by early 2022, but I still have no idea what that is. I mean, I'm guessing we'll get more details about it later, or I guess I'll have to watch the whole Pokemon presentation, which sadly I don't have time for. I have only I have class in like 25 minutes. But yeah, all that would look really, really interesting. I can't believe what they're doing with the franchise now. So far, we haven't seen anything bad. I just, though, of course, there are some rumors that I think probably, I, I'm not entirely sure they should, you know, be a reality. I mean, I heard that this was going to involve everything since the sixth generation mega evolution, which was probably the most revolutionary thing I've seen out of the Pokemon franchise. And then, of course, there's Z-Moves and Gigantamax. I just don't know how they're going to, you know, make all that work. I guess we'll have to wait and see more later on down the road. But yeah, I'm glad they're actually giving us what everyone's been wanting for quite a while, ever since Oraz. In fact, I was thinking maybe these would happen, like, way back in 2016 on the 20th anniversary of Pokemon. It would make sense because Diamond and Pearl, I mean, apparently every year after a decade has passed from the original version, they'd make a remake of that version. Like, for example, Gold Silver came out in 2000, Heart Gold and Soul Silver came out in 2010, Ruby and Sapphire came out in like 2003 or 2004, they gave us Oraz in 2014. Just figuring there might be a pattern to this all. A, pa a pattern to all this. Because, I mean, it's interesting to see them expand more and do more regions and stories and stuff like that. It just... But recently they've just felt a bit bland. Because, let's be frank, I haven't really found a good Pokemon game since Oraz and X and Y. Or at least a decent one, that is. Aside from maybe Ultra Sun and Moon. <clears throat> so, yeah guys, that was... Everything the new Pokemon Direct had to offer us, and it called me impressed and intrigued and interested. Three eyes. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I mean, I really don't know what else to say because, I mean, I think I've, I did all my reminiscing like in the very beginning. But, I mean, there is still something I have fond memories of, and that was, like, probably the battles I had with my friends, Henry and Teddy. I remember having a battle with Henry when Oraz came, not, not Oraz, Heart Gold and Soul Silver came out, and, yeah, I had a blast. I, I had just gotten the event Arceus that... Allowed me to get one of the legendary Sinnoh trio and Jojo. And I remember his Ho Oh just obliterating it. Apparently, we ran out of time, but given how far ahead he was in the battle, how much of my team had already taken out, I had to give the win to him. Yeah, but I think my battle with Teddy was a lot more memorable. I remember us being at school, X and Y had just released, we had been a couple months into its release, and I hadn't really, you know, transferred all my Pokemon from the previous generations that I had into my game, and yeah, Teddy's team was a lot more advanced, and I just had what Kalos had to offer. I had my starter, I had probably the bird Pokemon, my, my Talonflame. That always, you know, you always catch in the very beginning because apparently birds are always a traditional Pokemon that you get when you start off your journey. Like Kanto, Pidgey, Johto, 
Yeah, I don't know about Johto. I guess Pidgey as well, or maybe a bug Pokemon like Butterfree or Caterpie when it starts out. Hoenn was Talo, Sino was Starly, Unova was B Dove, and then Kalos had Fletchling. And I didn't really get into Gen 7 or 8, but I guess it, I guess Sword and Shield had something to do with Corviknight's evolutionary line, and yeah, I don't really know too much about what Alola had to offer. I bet it was interesting. So yeah, I had I had my Chestnut, I had my Talonflame, my Lucario, whom I got from Karina. Of course, Xerneas, given the fact that I was playing X and she was playing Y, U2, and Zygarde. And I can only remember half her, half her team, sadly. She had a Zygarde as well, Eveltal, and her Ampharos, which could Mega Evolve. So yeah, we were having a bit of a party at school, and I brought my DS, my, my 3DS, she brought hers. We battled it out, and... Yeah, the first round, the first time I fought her, she wore me down quite a bit. But we got to the point where it was just we were both down to our last one. It was my Mega Charizard X versus her. Wait, wait hang on. I think I may have misremembered my teams. What did I say? I had my starter, my bird Pokemon, Lucario, Mewtwo, Zygarde, and Zernia. So I had, actually, yeah, I had my, I had the Charizard I, the, the Charizard I got from. Professor Sycamore to research Mega Evolution, so I think to just replace Talonflame with Charizard. Yeah, I could Mega Evolve into Charizard X, and in our battle, it was down to my Mega Charizard X versus her Hurry Veltal. We wore each other down pretty good, but in the end, Hurry Veltal was just a little bit faster, and it completely oblivion winged me. But the next time we fought, after I had asked for a rematch a couple weeks later, we fought it. We pretty much spent our whole lunch period fighting it out, and we had a bit. We had some better results. I'm not entirely sure if the first few moments of our time in our Pokemon were the same as last, but apparently, I got her down to her last Pokemon, and I still had two left. And before I threw out Mega Charizard X, I was using Mewtwo, and of course she she had Eveltal, and she had a solid advantage given the fact that it's a dark type and Mewtwo is a psychic type, but my Mewtwo, it knew Aura Sphere, so it was the best bet I had. I mean, it wouldn't really be effective because Eveltal was also a flying type, and Aura Sphere, well, it's a fighting type move, which is effective against a dark type. It wouldn't be all that effective because, like I said, it's a flying type. But I kept spamming it, and apparently one of those Orospheres happened to be a critical hit and knock it out, and I won. <sighs> those were good times. I really, I really miss those days. I miss my friends. Te I miss Teddy. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to cover in this video, guys. I know it was a lot. I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to take up the entirety, you know, just talking. I know it's a reaction video but i mean when it comes to pokemon i can just go on for hours about my experiences so with that said now the way i hope you all enjoyed and i shall see you in the next one peace